Now, the Department of Education has less than two days to secure temporary relief for thousands of learners in the province. At least 186 schools have been severely or partially damaged by the recent storms that battered parts of Guazul Natal. And with less than 48 hours before the schools along the coast open, officials are racing against time to find alternative measures. Let's discuss this further now with Guazul Natal MEC for Education, Guazim Shengu. Um, MEC, thank you so much for your time this afternoon. We just witnessed a rescue operation by an NGO that is assisting people in Guazulu Natal in an area um, in Lady Smith. Let's talk about the work that you also did on the ground. You've got less than 48 hours to go when schools are said to be open. Talk to us about what you found on the ground and do you think you're on track to open schools this week? Uh, good uh, afternoon to you and to the viewers. Um, we are basically all in the rescue machine uh, because of the inclement weather conditions that continue to affect the province. Uh, our schools have indeed been severely affected. We are now standing at uh, 191 schools that have reported uh, uh, damages as a result of uh, these inclement weather conditions. Um, as we are correctly indicating that in the area of Daddy Smith, uh, flooding continues that side. And uh, we have had to issue a directive that 39 schools uh, should not open today and probably tomorrow, depending on how the weather is uh, performing. Because it was clear that uh, if we're going to open them today, we're going to risk the life or uh, the lives of these educators. Uh, because of flooding that is taking place. So we had to take that decision. Mm. We continue to monitor the situation, but also working hard to make sure that uh, there are temporal uh, interventions that are made for those schools that uh, were affected so now, that MEC, um, before, pardon at least me, teaching pardon and learning me, MEC, is not affected on the first day. Pardon me, MEC, before we get to the temporary measures, the 39 schools, are they all in Lady Smith or across the province? They are all under uh, Utugela district, which will include Daddy Smith, Bedville, as well as Escort. Let's talk then about the provisions that you say have been made, especially for pupils whose classes and books have been damaged by the heavy rains in other areas where you think you'll be able to open. Of the 191 schools that uh, uh, are affected, uh, 90 of them uh, are in dire need of the mobile classrooms. Uh, so that uh, teaching and learning is not affected. But even those uh, uh, schools that are in dire need, um, if, uh, we, 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 we are comfortable that teaching and learning will begin on Wednesday because not all the classrooms were affected. So as we follow the rotational timetable, uh, it means certain grades will not come. We are expecting that in those schools, at least grade 10, I mean grade 12 and 11 will be able to be received uh, on the on on Wednesday, and uh, during the course of the week, we'll continue to make provision of those uh, mobile classrooms that are needed. Uh, we are following uh, strict procurement measures um, so that uh, we also don't put officials under strain and they make uh, mistakes. Uh, so we are going to make sure that uh, by end of this week, at least all those schools that are affected. Uh, I mean, do receive these mobile classrooms. Some of them have received them because um, there are schools that were renovating last year and we have had to, to uplift the mobile classrooms that were in those schools and redeploy them to the affected schools. I'm told that delivery will also be happening in other schools tomorrow. So we're pushing that at least by the end of the week. Uh, all those schools that are in need uh, are provided with such uh, interim measures. Mm. And uh, one of the things that has been uh, quite, uh, you know, huge in, in, in the province of Guazul Natal has been uh, the issues of scholar transport. And I'm sure with this particular uh, weather, it's going to be more than ever before all important for the department to ensure that pupils get to school safely because we've seen some of them crossing uh, flooded rivers, low-lying bridges in all Order to be able to get to school the issue of scholar transport in case attend continue to be continues to be a problem and uh, as we have been saying the only solution to it is additional funding um, we continue to be disproportionately funded in terms of scholar transport given the fact that um, our province is largely rural and we are the biggest system of education in the country but we get funded with about uh, 320 million for the entire year and that only allow, allows us to 
um, transport about 67,000 learners across the province. And in the waiting list, we have over 117,000 learners that are deserving, but we are not able to transport them because of, of, of lack of funding. Now, these inclement weather conditions uh, will make it difficult, really, for learners who ordinarily walk to school across a bridge, because some of the bridges have been um, have been flooded, some um, are, are, are underwater, as we speak. So it will be impossible for learners to to then cross those those bridges. And the call that we are making uh, to our teachers and learners, and we have said to principals and um, circuit managers, we must not open schools when it is not safe to do so. And uh, when we know that uh, a particular bridge has been um, flooded or learners can't cross, we can't force to open the school and, and risk the life of the lives of learners as well as educators. So we'll continue uh, to to monitor the situation, the situation, and hope that uh, mm. these weather uh, conditions will improve such that at least the water levels can subside and allow the movement to and from schools. Now, MEC, one of the challenges that your province is facing, like Gauteng, is the placement of pupils in schools. Now it's going to be added pressure with this weather. In December, there was uh, re there were reports suggesting that some over 200,000 pupils were still waiting to be placed in schools. Has that number reduced? And are you confident that all pupils will be in class come this week? We are confident that uh, the majority of our people will be in class. As it stands, we have enrolled over 2.6 million learners that have um, found spaces uh, in different parts of our schools. Uh, the, the, the records as of today were indicating that uh, there is now less than 1,100 learners who uh, are still being assisted to get uh, uh, into different schools uh, in our province. In our province, and that work will continue tomorrow. And uh, hopefully by Wednesday, we'll have cleared all that uh, list. But we know that uh, on the first schooling day, which is Wednesday, there will be also a number of people people uh, who are walking in uh, to different parts of our schools who have not applied uh, or who have applied in different schools, but now are choosing another school. And uh, we have put in place mechanisms to assist those learners. All our 12 districts uh, in the province uh, have admission committees that uh, are ready to assist mm -hmm. uh, those learners who will be presenting themselves for the first time uh, on Wednesday. But our intention and our plan is that by the end of January, every learner that is supposed to be in class should indeed be in class. And we are committed to achieve that. MEC, thank you so much for your time. And, uh, of course, it really looks like it's a desperate situation with the weather there in the province of Guazul Natal. The MEC is saying that the number has moved from, in fact, 186 the last time we saw the reports. Now schools that are in need of assistance, around 191 in Guazul Natal. And 39 of those in the Utugela district have been instructed not to open. And that was the Guazul Natal MEC for Education, Kwasim Shen.